Hey, so um, I got some emails back from you saying you like the 6-2 videos, the whiteboard, so uh, I decided I'd just go ahead and do a couple more. These, uh, tomorrow, which is Tuesday, you are working on quiz six, and I took uh, three of the problems, and I'm gonna go ahead and at least write out or get them started on the whiteboard so you can see where we're going. I think 6-2, um, this is uh, joint distributions. Oh, that's a lie. No, it's not, sorry. <laughs> yeah, this is joint distribution. I don't know what was going through my head. So um, yes, this is 8-1 joint distributions. And chapter eight is a little bit tough too because you might have forgotten about double integrals, double sums. And so I don't think you know, the actual mechanics, it's setting up the problem and seeing what region you're going to integrate over. So that's why I thought I would do a couple of these just for extra help. So this is 8-1 joint distributions. Um, this is again from a quiz. The problem here, um, there's an actual story that goes with it. Um, we have an environmental engineer and they're trying to measure amount of pollution that's coming out of a power plant. Um, they have a cover for a smokestack, or they call it a cleaning device. X is going to be the amount of the air pollutant uh, without the cleaning device, and Y is the amount with the cleaning device. So we have two random variables, X and Y, and we're going to have a joint distribution. So over here is my joint uh, probability density function. Um, I know it's continuous because right here, uh, X and Y are written over intervals, so I know this isn't a mass, a discrete function. This is continuous, and um, over this region of interest right here, that thing has to integrate to one or it wouldn't be a valid density function. So I think when you do any of these problems for me, uh, the first thing I do, this is called my region of interest. Any problem you do to find a marginal, to find an expected value, you have to feel comfortable with this region of interest. So the first thing I do with any of these, and I, I still, even at the end of the quarter, have students that resist this, but you really want to draw um, a picture of this region, and then I think it's easy to set up your limits of integration. If you just try to do it looking off of that, I, it is possible, but I think it's harder. So right now, f of x, y is 1 over this region, so I'll go ahead and draw this region. It's fairly nice. I started you out with a nice region. Um, X's go from 0 to 2, so 0, 1, 2, and Y's go from 0 to 1, so here are my X's and Y's, so it's somewhere in this little rectangular region here. Okay, and I have a follow-up condition that X's has to be greater than 2Y, so X greater than 2Y means that y is less than x over 2. So if you think about it, I have a line going through right here. This is the line y equals x over 2. And I want y's that are less than x over 2. So technically, it doesn't matter because this is continuous, but this should be a dotted line, right? And I want everybody down here. So this is my region of interest. So when I set up integrals, I'm thinking here's where I care about. And if you integrate your joint over this region, you actually do get one. You can see why. The base of this is two, so half base times height is, is one. And then this guy comes out, f of x1, it comes out to a height of one, right? Because we're thinking three dimensions now. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is determine the marginal. So I know there's a lot of language here. When you have f of x, y, you have the joint, and the marginals are just one of the random variables separate. So um, I put the little x there. I, I like to remind myself I'm trying to find the marginal of x, and if I were finding the marginal of y, I'd put a y there. So to find the marginal of x, I have to integrate over my y's. Okay, so here's, here's the hard part. Um, so I want to integrate over my y. So f of x of x is really just integrating your joint, so that's my joint, uh, f of x, y over my y's, dy, and y's go from something to something, okay? So if I look at, here are my x's going from 0 to 2. If I take any y in this interval, let's just say I take this y right here, this y goes from here to there. Any y will always go down here from the x-axis up to this line. So y's are actually going from 0 to x over 2. So y's are going to go from 0 to x over 2. 
and now we're good to go. And you can see, I think, again, the hard part for me is setting up these limits. But f of x, y will always go in here. If it's the marginal for x, you'll have dy. So the procedure follows. It's always just finding these bounds that is, is the hardest part. So this is going to be y is from 0 to x over 2. f of x, y is 1 dy. So luckily, we have a very nice function to integrate. So this is y from y equals 0 to y equals x over 2. OK. So if I plug that in there, I'm going to get uh, x over 2 minus 0. So x over 2, f of x, uh, f of x, the marginal, is just x over 2. Last thing I have to do is figure out what this guy's support is. But you can see going back to the beginning, x's were defined from 0 to 2. So if I pick any y in here, my x's are going from 0 to 2. So this is my support. Well, this, I mean, again, is continuous, so I don't really have to worry too much there. So this is f of x of x my marginal for x. And you can check it. He's valid, right? Integrate him over 0 to 2. You're going to get 1. So there's the function that defines how x is working. Um, if I wanted f of y, I would, I would integrate with respect to the x's. Um, now that I have this, I could find expected value of x. Um, I thought I should also just set up the next part. Part b, um, I was asking you, let's just take this little bit of board to find uh, the probability that y is less than or equal to a third x. And again, I think if you have your picture and you know where that is in that region, then setting up the limits will be easy and finding this probability will be easy. So coming over here again, sorry for all the back and forth, but here is, uh, I should have used a better marker, but about here is y equals one-third x. So to find the probability now, I'm just integrating my joint over this region right here. So I'll go ahead and set up my limits of integration just so you can see what it would be. Um, so the probability y is less than or equal to one-third is the joint over that blue region, which would be a double integral. Um, my x's go from 0 to 2. And for x is going from 0 to 2, my y's are going from 0 to a third x. And this is just my joint. Um, inside is dy, outside is dx. There's my double integral. I'll get a numeric value because this is a probability. It better be less than 1. It's legal. So anyway, at, le at least I thought I would set this up. And again, if you, if you have a probability statement, if you can see what it is on that interval, then setting up the limits of integration will make your life a lot easier. So, so here is problem number one. Um, I'm going to do a couple more problems, but uh, if you have any questions about this, go ahead and email me, and I hope it made sense. All right, thanks.